Welcome to our executive interview series. Today we have a very special guest, Brenda Lyons, Head of Private Investments and Portfolio Manager at Perennial Partners, a company that is providing its investment partners with strategic, operational and distribution expertise while allowing them to focus on managing money. Brendan, thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Rhythm. Great to be here. Amazing. Now, uh, to begin the interview, can you firstly tell us about the history and evolution of Perennial Partners and how has the firm grown and diversified over the years? Yeah, Perennial Partners has been an investment manager for a long time. We first started in the year 2000, so we've had 23 years of, of investment management. Started in Sydney, but now we have people based in, in most of the capital cities of Australia. Uh, during that time, the business has diversified from initially focused on mainly listed equities on the ASX to now having 10 or 12 different investment strategies under perennial partners. The business I head up is perennial private investments. And so we're focused on investing in private growth stage and pre-IPO IPO companies. Um, we're looking to transition from private to public, uh, become listed companies via an IPO or going down a trade sale or, or private takeover route. Amazing, that's brilliant. Now let us talk about the Perennial Private Ventures Fund number one, which is PPV, and how does that differ from the previous, the private to public strategies fund that you had, and what has led you to launch this particular fund? Yeah, it is slightly different strategy, PPV versus our, our triple P funds. We have three mm -hmm. of those. Uh, they're all closed funds now. PPV is open for investment today. Uh, it's a couple of differences. It is a different um, legal structure. It's a, it's a VCLP structure, so it's a partnership structure uh, as opposed to a unit trust, which the triple P funds are. Mm -hmm. uh, but more importantly, that it, it's focused purely on private growth investments. So these are private businesses, mainly located in Australia and New Zealand, who are looking for an institutional partner to help them grow and professionalise. Uh, what we're finding is, is companies want to stay private for longer. They don't want to IPO mm -hmm. too quickly. They don't want to sell too quickly. Mm -hmm. Stay private for longer, get a lot bigger and then you've got a lot more options. And so this fund is a dedicated private growth fund, which is one of the three buckets we invest in in the triple P uh, strategy, but we've decided to have a dedicated fund around private growth, and that's the, the main difference. Amazing. Now, can you also walk us through the investment thesis? Like that would be something our viewers would be interested in. And what was the strategy behind uh, PPV as well? And how did you actually select and evaluate the uh, potential investments? Yeah, so the strategy is around private growth businesses, which which aren't startups, we're not investing in, in brand new startup businesses, and we're not traditional private equity, we're not trying to take controlling uh, stakes in businesses. We're looking for companies which are founder-led, want to grow, stay private, and, and get a lot bigger, and looking for an institutional partner that, that can help them, and someone that can partner with them all the way through. So we're going to invest as in private growth, other funds that, you know, the triple P funds or our listed funds at Perennial can then support them at IPO and hold them as public companies, so that's the path they're on. So. Um, that's really the focus, I guess, of, of the new fund. In terms of what we select, uh, you know, we're looking for companies which have product market fit, so they need to be, already have revenue, already have a product in the market, but not startups. Uh, we're looking for founders with experience who have exited companies before. Uh, we're looking for businesses with great economics and financials around their business, you know, high margins, good returns on the capital they're investing. Uh, and most importantly, we are looking for businesses where we can invest at good terms. We need to invest at good valuations and good terms, uh, which in the current market has become more favorable, so it's been a, it's a great time to be to investing in private companies. Yeah, absolutely. Now, can you also tell us how has the PPV fund performed since its launch and what actually sets it apart from other venture uh, capital vehicles? Yeah, it's been busy. We, we had the first close um, in the third quarter of last calendar year, uh, looking at the final close in the second quarter of, of this calendar year, so in the next quarter. Um, we've made eight investments already. Uh, Unlike some of our other funds, you can actually see those eight investments for investors that come in now. So that's the benefit of having a fund that's been open for longer than the, the triple P funds were, for example. Uh, it's investing in a, in a cross section of, of high growth businesses. Uh, we, are, we don't invest in cyclical companies. Um, we're not looking for things that have commodity exposure, for example, or that are too, um, too driven by the economic cycle, which I think in this environment is a good thing. These are, are, are growth, growth companies. Uh, so we've got businesses which are focus across uh, software, uh, gaming, um, health tech, um, logistics, and, and medical devices. So we think they're all great sectors to be investing at the moment. Amazing. Now, uh, for my next question, I would love to know what kind of companies do you typically invest in through the PPV fund? And uh, do you also work with these companies, helping them grow and succeed? Yeah, we, we certainly do. And we are looking to be that life cycle partner for these companies. So one of the, the differences, I think, is that 
We're not looking to exit at an IPO, for example, if that's the pathway they're on, we're happy to own, own them for longer than that. And as part of that process and philosophy, we're looking to professionalize these businesses. And so we do help them in a number of different ways. Um, it might be something as, as simple as saying, all right, we need to get the board organized for to become a bigger company. So do we need new independent directors? Do we need a new chair? Sometimes they're looking to expand their executive management team. We have databases and contacts in the industry and we help them, help them with that process. Around the, the financials, the capital structure and the markets piece, that's obviously an area that yeah. our companies ex hope that we can help them with and, and that's, our, that's our expertise. We, we spend, obviously, our team has long experience in, in both private and public markets and transactional experience. Most of us have done corporate advisory roles in the past and worked at, at larger investment banks, for example. So mm -hmm. we provide that sort of expertise in helping them understand the financials um, and the capital structure and just that process. Um, counterparties are important, you know, who uh, they, they may not have a corporate advisor, they may not have a, a broker, an accountant, a lawyer, an auditor. Um, we help them with those sort of introductions as they become more professional and, and look to go um, down a pathway to whether it's an IPO or an exit, you, you need those sort of counterparties around you. And there's other things like they come to us, we've got a very well developed ESG mm -hmm. business and, and a capability within Perennial, so they, you know, companies come to us for, for that expertise as well. Uh, but really, I think what they're hoping us to, to bring, to be honest, is, is institutional and professional mindset as their companies grow and develop. And whether they go down a trade sale or an IPO pathway, that's helpful for, for these businesses. Absolutely. Now, uh, Brendan, as a parting question, it would be great if you could share it with us. Like looking ahead, what are your plans for the PPV fund and other investment strategies that are being offered by perennial partners? And how do you actually see the firm evolving in the coming years? Yeah, no, it's a great question. The, the PPV fund is open now for investment. At, we are planning to close it next quarter. Uh, we will make a few more investments um, in that fund. Uh, there'll be a, it'll get up to a, something in the teens, I suspect, in terms of number of investments. So uh, investors who have come in and new investors can, can look forward to those updates. Uh, we actually had uh, one business announced in the AFR today. There was an article about a business called Mindset, which has just gone into the PPV fund. So um, your viewers might like to, to, to refer to that article. I think... Um, in terms of beyond that, that, that's really our focus is to get this fund up and running. We've, yeah. we've launched, um, we've got six private funds at Perennial. Uh, we've grown the business over, over six years to get the, to that level. And, and our current focus is just to, to get the up current fund fully, you know, get the current fund fully raised and fully invested. Uh, and then we you know, continue to manage the portfolio actively um, in this environment, ensuring our companies are in a strong financial position and they continue to grow yeah. and then look to exit the positions progressively over the next few years. Amazing. Well, we are definitely looking forward to keeping tabs on the growth of Perennial moving forward. And I would also like to thank you for coming on for this interview and sharing these wonderful insights and the work that your team is doing. For anyone who is interested to get in touch with the team at Perennial Partners, please see the details in the description of this video or on your screen. Thank you again, Brendan. It has truly been a delightful conversation. Thanks, Rhythm. Thanks for having yeah. me.